You're listening to the LA Football Podcast. Los Angeles, what's up? Welcome back to the LA Football Show here in the LA Football Network. We are live on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. This is your Rams House segment brought to you by our friends at Bet Online. Head to betonline.ag today. Use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V. You get a 50% welcome bonus. The end of the season is finally here, Jamal. For our Rams, you know, it did not go how we wanted, but we did have some fun times this year. Obviously, we'll reflect on the entire season after this game is played because we still got one left. It's against the Seahawks in Seattle and our Rams and Rams fans would want nothing more than to send Pete Carroll, Geno Smith, DK Metcalf all to Cabo because they're in a win and potentially in scenario. But if they lose, they are most likely unless something crazy happens out. So the Rams can single-handedly knock their division rival out of the playoffs and obviously get revenge on the loss they had earlier in the year on a DK Metcalf over Jalen Ramsey, you know, game ending touchdown. So all of that mouthful Jamal, what's up my man, how are we feeling about these Rammies heading into week 18? It's going to be fun, Ryan. It, there's such a college feel to it, isn't it? Because it's, you've got kind of one team trying to get into the dance and the other team just playing complete spoiler and you've got the rival, you know, and, and we get a taste of that in LA from time to time. USC trying to play for a Rose Bowl or national championship and UCLA playing the role of spoiler. And, and you sort of have that feel to it, especially with, with Carol's college ties and college days. So I'm sure he's getting a sense that it feels that way a bit. Certainly Ryan, it's, it's win and possibly in for the Seahawks lose and they're definitely out because for the Seahawks, they need the, if the Packers beat the lions, they are uh, they're eliminated regardless of what happens. They need to win and they need the Lions to beat the Packers because they have the tie break over the Lions. But if the Lions beat the Packers and they lose, they're done. There's no conversation there. So they have to win just to stay alive. And the Rams are being able to play the role of spoiler. Again, a very Baker Mayfield mm-hmm. pro opportunity, right? I mean, I think we've gotten four games now of Baker. The, the game that he had no preparation – he put on a show. Then he had preparation against the Packers late at night. Then we, you know, we, we weren't sure what we were going to get against a quality defense like the Broncos. They sort of, you know, sort of combusted and he was able to hit the play action, kind of do sensible things. Great win. Then can he level up against the Chargers? He goes flat again. And so now it's an opportunity in a game where no one believes the Rams have a chance in one of the hardest places to play. You know, it's that EKG here. Win, lose, win, lose. Now Baker has an opportunity to end on a high note. And I think this is a very important game for Baker, Ryan, because I think he had a very magical final seven minutes against the Raiders, but the first three and a half quarters was only three points. Then when you look at that Broncos game, the Broncos game was more a function, I believe, of the Broncos just turning the ball over left and right, down 17 nothing, down 24-3, and the game was essentially over. Baker did a nice job being game manager, getting the ball out of the tight ends. But I don't know if Baker necessarily showed anything that constituted, my God, this guy has to be a starting quarterback in the NFL. So this is, he's two and two with two mediocre to subpar performances and the losses. So this is his final audition to really show, is this guy capable of being a starting quarterback in the league next year? And so I think, it drastically changes if he's three and two and goes on the road in one of the toughest places to play and knock off a potential playoff team in Seattle to lead that team to victory versus finish two and three with just those sort of performances against the Raiders and the Broncos. I think we, we think about Baker very, very differently going into the off season, both within the Rams organization, but also collectively in the NFL. So I think this is a very big game for Baker. This is as big a game for Baker as it is for Geno Smith and it is for Pete Carroll in in a variety of ways. So I'm expecting to see kind of best on best here in terms of execution and the opportunity to make plays and really excited about that. Yeah, I talked about it on our Chargers show that I was, I'm very happy that 
obviously the Chargers game has meaning because they are fighting for that five seed, but I'm very happy it's not like a win and end kind of game because that Denver team scares me having nothing to play for is one play spoiler. And that's how I feel about this one. If I'm a Seahawks fan, like I'm terrified of this Rams team, like this Rams team, as I just said on the whole intro, like wants to do nothing more than send these guys to Cabo and everything you just said in terms of the quarterback play. I mean, Baker is playing for his next job. And if, and we, we don't need to talk too much about this. We've talked about it a lot, but obviously as long as Stafford's healthy and wants to come back, Stafford's the quarterback here. And there's just no feasible way the Rams can keep both. Uh, unless Baker's like, Hey, I really love being here in LA. I love McVay. I'll, I'll take a $2 million a contract to be the backup, but he could easily get a job with the jets or some somewhere else where he's making 15, 20 million probably as a starter. So unless Stafford retires, he won't be in LA, but he's playing for another job. And so not only everything you just said, ending three and two, having a good caliber win, showing that he can prepare the right way, um, but then ending the season, knocking a team out of the playoffs. Obviously, as a player, that always makes you feel better. You know, playing spoiler is that fun kind of it's the it's the dessert you can have even when you did not finish your meal, right? Like if you're the Rams, they didn't eat their meal. They didn't get out, out of the dinner table. They didn't have a good season. But if they can knock the Seahawks out, you still get ice cream at the end of the at the end of the night. Somehow, parents are a pushover, I guess. But that is kind of what this spoiler can be: spoil your appetite, whatever you want to call it. And um, yeah, I don't. We'll get obviously we had some time here before predictions, but I, I just like the Rams in this one. I mean, I just I'm looking for Tyler Higby to play well. Cam Akers also built. I mean, a lot of these guys tomorrow are just it's resume building. I mean, so many injuries and. The, Offense just decimated that I'm, I'm looking for Tutu Atwell to have a really good game here. Um, so give me give me some player predictions. Let's talk a little. We the Rams we never really talk into the game too much because there's not a lot to get into. But give me some player <laughs> predictions on this one, Jamal. Ryan, I'll, I'll be. I'm very interested to know what, and I'm going to be very excited about this. What happens with Cam Akers after this game? Because yeah. we talked about guys playing for other jobs, guys auditioning. Baker, the jury's still out two and two. He's shown us some flashes, hasn't really put a whole game together where they really needed it. I think you don't really feel differently about Baker four games in than you did before as a, as a fringe starter, maybe as a bridge starter on a bad team, but he hasn't really elevated his stock. This is his last chance. Cam Akers, Ryan, has very much elevated his stock over the last five or six weeks. And he's yeah. gotten more carries. He's coming off a 19-carry, 123-yard game against the Chargers. He was really the only semblance of offense the Rams had in that game last week and really played significantly well. And so I'm really looking at, I think Cam Akers is going to get eh, close to 150 yards in this game because I think the Rams are going to want to run the ball. They're going to be on the road. They want to avoid big mistakes. And I think everything is sort of predicated in terms of this McVay variant offense that he's running with Baker is to get him rolling out bootlegs. But you you do that more effectively when you can run the ball more effectively. So I like Cam Akers to have a 150-yard, one-touchdown type of game here. And then what does that do in terms of the decision-making moving forward? Obviously, they almost had a divorce, Cam, and organization. Now he's come back. Are you – is this just a foregone conclusion – that you're letting him go, that you're trying to trade him for a pick? Or is there a conceivable scenario here where you realize, you know what? I think there's some tread on this tires here still for another year or two. Let's bring him back and make him RB1, even though we've got a Kyron Williams waiting in the wings. Even though we had some preconceived notions about Cam, but he's shown enough to really give him another look this year. So I'm really fascinated to see how that ends. And I think that decision only becomes tougher with 150 yard one one touchdown performance. I also like Tutu Atwell having a deep touchdown in this game. I just see it happening, kind of a bootleg deep ball. Baker's gonna throw one up. And I think Tutu with his speed, I'm predicting kind of a 70 plus yard touchdown from Tutu um, with, with Baker. I think those are the two guys that I see really standing out here on the road. It's gonna be kind of ground and pound and then play action deep. Uh, which is some of the things that Baker likes to do. So I'm excited to see that unfold here. Yeah. You know, in, in regards to cam, it's so, and 
I'm so curious if this is one of those, because since he's come back, he has, you know, they kind of worked him back a little slowly. Like you see, he became the lead back immediately, but it wasn't like they were giving him 25 carries, you know, it was like 12 here, 15, 16 here. Um, but he, he looked incrementally better. And then obviously these last few leaks, he's looked like the Cam Akers we all expected after getting drafted in the second round. And I'm so curious, Jamal, if it's one of those where he realized whoever was wrong, whether it was coaching him, whatever, we still don't really fully know what really happened to have him be benched anyway. Um, whether he realized that, okay, you know what? I buy in. I am in a good spot. I like this. Or- I love this organization. I love my, I'm playing for my guys. Or is it one of those where he's saying, like we just talked about with resume building, where he's like, I know I'm not going to play here next year. I don't care how good I look. I don't want to play here next year. I will ask to be traded, whatever it takes, but I want to show that I'm still valuable so I can be traded and a team buys after me. I'm not saying he's doing that or saying that, but I'm really curious kind of if it's one of those or if it's just things are working better now and he's getting better blocks and he's seeing his visions. I mean, who knows, but it is in, in kind of insane how, his play is elevated so much after the almost divorce. I mean, it's almost like a married couple that was on the brink of divorce. They get a world renowned couples therapist and come out more in love than they were before they got married. I mean, that's what it seems like, but we'll see how that looks. Now, that being said, I'm agreeing with everything you're saying that if he does have a big game, which I think he will, Seattle doesn't have a great run defense. Jordan Brooks is going to be out their star linebacker. So they should be able to run on that defense. Uh, If you're the Rams. Yeah. You, I mean, he's under contract still. It's only going to be his, what, fourth year? Um, so he still has another year of, of contract. So you you definitely are not letting him – you're definitely not trading him, I should say, or cutting him. Uh, I think he's definitely on the roster with him, Kyron, and maybe you draft one more guy in the mid-rounds. Obviously, they already released Daryl Henderson earlier in the year. So uh, I, I think that that would be a formidable attack based on what we've seen. So will it come to fruition? We will see. That's an interesting offseason talk. 2-2. I think two two out well. So I'm I'm looking here. His biggest um I'm trying to find his biggest yardage output because I think he's going to have his best overall statistical game as a Ram. So his most yards ever are sixty two yards. It came on one catch against the Titans. So I think hot take here, Jamal. Tutu Owl is going to have over 100 yards receiving in the season finale. Chevarius Tutu Atwell is going to get over the over the century mark. One of those, obviously, probably on a big play. But then, you know, Baker does like targeting him more than we've seen uh, with the other quarterbacks on this roster. So let's go Tutu for the century mark. So if you're going to bet online, betonline.ag, you can put some money down on, on the Tutu over. Because I don't know what it is, but I'm sure it's not 100. So take the over. I love that. I love that. Oh, my goodness. Ryan Dyroad going out on a limb for his guy, Tutu Atwell. And I completely agree. If, if he is going to have one deep 70-plus yard touchdown, hopefully he can cobble together <laughs> another 30 yards and get over that century mark. So I think we're on the same page there. And, and Ryan, the other guy I'm really looking for here is Jalen Ramsey, who, you know, mm-hmm. my nickname for him in many ways the last few weeks is the anti-cam because – for a guy whose stock has gone up so much in Cam Akers, I mean, has there been a player in the NFL whose stock has fallen more in the last 12 months than Jalen Ramsey from the end of last year's playoff run to opening night against Buffalo and consistently getting burned by digs to Metcalf issues, just to, to guys, you know, that he's just losing out to in one-on-one play and, and on the back end here. So, I'm looking for Jalen Ramsey to have a really good game here and end the season with some momentum and feeling good about himself going into next year. I don't think he's the player that he was. I think we're firmly out of the Jalen Ramsey prime. I've mentioned that a bunch before. But I think Jalen Ramsey needs to have a good game so we figure out what his role is going to be next year given some of the cover skills diminishing are the Rams going to use him? You've said this earlier in more of a Derwin James capacity, bringing him on as a striker a little bit, as more of a, a blitzer from particular secondary positions, helping a little bit as, as a secondary helper on primary receivers, having him in more zone schemes on certain sides of the field. 
So I think there's a lot that can still be done with Ramsey. I think he's still a terrific player. I just think the days of him as an all pro are over, but I see him, especially after DK Metcalf really got his number in that earlier matchup. How does he respond and how does he end the season the right way to, to build momentum going into 23? Yeah, certainly one. And, you know, I mentioned it earlier that game winning touchdown for DK was over Jalen Ramsey. And obviously, you know, he takes that personally. He, I will say this. I feel like the last few weeks we've seen maybe not the Chargers game, but before that we'd seen some improvement over the beginning. But yeah, I agree with you. He's definitely not the best corner in football anymore. Like we, that's a fact. He's just not. Now he can definitely still have a very good role. It's, I mean, can you imagine if they, they get another number one corner and he's your number two? I mean, they're sitting in a really good spot there. So we're not definitely, we're not saying the guy's washed, or at least I'm not saying he's washed. There's a very big difference between being the best and being very good still from being good to being washed. There's a very big difference there. So we still think he's a good player, good corner. Um, but when we've talked about, you know, different, you know, strategies and rebuild or draft or that, I don't even know how he much necessarily trade stock he has again, not because he's not good anymore, but because of that contract, you need to be yeah. great. You need to be one of the yeah. best. if You're going to take that contract on. So unless something changes dramatically or someone's desperate, you know, and I'm not saying this is a bad thing. Love Jalen Ramsey, but I think he will be a Ram moving forward. And I think you have said this and I agree with you that the Rams, albeit unless Stafford decides to retire, they're going to give it one more go with this group and run it back with this group and get everyone healthy next year and, um, and do it like that. So, all right, let's do some predictions then Jamal. And I'm going to do, I'm going to be a real poignant prediction here. We haven't talked about this player yet who is playing for the first time at Lumen Field in a different uniform, mm. the great Bobby Wagner. I think the Rams are going to win this game. I think it's going to be back and forth affair. It's going to be an exciting game, not necessarily high scoring, but exciting. Obviously a lot on the line for the Seahawks. Geno Smith trying to prove that he's not just a one-year guy and he can be the quarterback for them. They don't need to go out and take Bryce Young with the third pick or wherever the Seahawks sit right now or C.J. Stroud. Um, but I think the Rams get it done and I think they win it. I'm going to go white weird score. I'm going to go 19, 17 and the game ends with a Bobby Wagner sack of Geno Smith. And that's how wow. the game ends. And that's how the Seahawks find themselves flying to Cabo. Your prediction. So poetic, Ryan. Oh my goodness. You know, let's sign them up for the Pulitzer there. That was beautifully done. Ryan, I think a similar score. I think it's not going to be as high scoring, but I think there's going to be some epic back and flow. I mentioned I think Cam's going to get 150 in a touch. I think there's going to be a deep ball to 2-2. Uh, but I think there's just too much on the line here for the Seahawks at home. I think it's it's going to be a tall order. I think Bobby Wagner is going to get 10-plus tackles in this game. I think those three guys are really going to really stand out. But ultimately, I think there's going to need to be one additional – touchdown drive in the fourth quarter that the Rams need to get that they just don't quite have in their arsenal with the, the level of personnel that they have. I think the Seahawks will hold on 23-17. I still don't think the Seahawks are going to make the playoffs. They're still going to go to Cancun, but I think that they're going to ultimately finish the season 9-8. and 23-17, uh, they get it done uh, up in Seattle. There you go. So <clears throat> should be a good game. Um, obviously all Lions fans kind of became Rams fans anyway, being that Stafford was traded here and, you know, everyone beloved Stafford in the city of Detroit, but even more so now our Rams fans, obviously to get this win, but obviously the Lions got to take care of their own business and beat the Packers. But yeah, you know, I think this season Jamal has, it's been a tough year, uh, obviously for the team, for the fan base, uh, being the, you know, most losing, I'm not phrasing that correctly, but the team that has the most losses after being the defending Super Bowl champion and uh, all the injuries and turnover. And there's talks even of offensive coordinator, Liam Cohen, maybe returning to Kentucky. Uh, so they may have another offensive coordinator next year. Um, can you imagine if, well, it would be a new staff anyway, but, but yeah, he's got to do that whole thing again. But I think these last, and I don't want to put it all on Baker and I, I and obviously he deserves a ton of credit, but I feel like these last, and again, take out this chargers game, these last kind of five weeks have at least restored some fun 
with this Rams team. I think at like that week eight, nine period, it was so bleak, so down. Everyone knew the season was over, but you're still kind of hanging on, but the injuries were so bad. They weren't playing good. They were losing to bad teams. And even though they're only two and two with Baker right now, it's restored some fun, I feel like. And I think Rams fans and Sean McVay and the players have kind of felt the resurgence. I, I compared it um, a while back to it's kind of like when you are golfing and you're having a horrible round and you get that birdie on 18 and you're like, all right, when are we going again? I'm, I'm back into it. And at this end of the season has felt like that for the Rams. It was so bad and so bleak. But the way it's kind of ended, again, only two and two at record wise, but just the way they've been playing, it seems like they're having more fun. The fan base is kind of rejuvenated by it. So it'll be great to end the year with a win against a division rival and kind of then go into the offseason. And as you've mentioned, and we're running out of time, but as you've mentioned, Donald, Stafford, McVeigh, hopefully they have a sit down conversation in January or at the latest February and decide what they are doing with their future with this franchise. And so then we can move on and move forward and know what this team's going to look like heading into next season. So I ended with the long monologue, Jamal. I apologize. That's all time we have. This is the LA football show. Thank you all for tuning in. Go Rams. Jamal taking the Seahawks, but I know he likes the Rams. I'm taking the Rams in this one. 2-2 Atwell. 100 plus yards, baby. Let's go. Everyone take care. Talk to you all next week. You're listening to the LA Football Podcast.